Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast. Thank you for checking out another episode of the show. Today's features my longtime friend and professional baseball pitcher, Ross Detweiler. I had a whole lot of fun sitting down with Ross and recording this one for you. Um, I do want to remind you, Rock Paper Podcast is brought to you by Roughneck Beard Company and American Rambler, located here in St. Louis, Missouri. You can shop locally at their uh, store in Maplewood off of Manchester or shop 24-7 at roughneckbeardcompany.com. You can use my code RPP15 for an exclusive 15% off your purchase. Uh, you can find all their beard oils, beard balms, uh, their junk powder. There's all sorts of wonderful products over there. But uh, I do want to recommend you check out their Roughneck Genesis. Changing the beard industry since 2016. This cutting edge formulation of aloe vera juice infused with biotin, B12, MSM, and natural glycerin will push your facial hair to its healthiest and fullest potential while making your oils and balms work harder. Nothing else like it on the market, folks. Find it at roughneckbeardcompany.com and get yourself some today. Uh, You can, again, find everything at the website. There are all sorts of wonderful grooming products. If you uh, if you have a beard or you know somebody with a beard, you need to tell them to check it all out, all their natural products at roughneckbeardcompany.com. Also, big thanks to Heil Sound for their continued support and helping me make this show sound great. Shop at heilsound.com today and get yourself a brand new microphone. All right. Uh, that's it for me, everybody. If uh, if you haven't checked it out, please, please go visit the brand new uh, new and improved rockpaperpodcast.com. Uh, me and my buddy Mikey did a lot of work to make it look uh, sharp over there, so check it out. Uh, hit me up at rockpaperpodcast at gmail if you have any th- questions or concerns or uh, re- guest request or anything else. I would love to hear from you. So hit me up there or any of the socials. Um, but that out of the way, sit back, relax, and enjoy this new episode with my buddy, Ross Detweiler. Um, a podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. This is Ross Detweiler, and you're listening to Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. This is beat paper, paper covers rock. Rock beats is the shame covers non-stop, never know what new kind of guests that he's got coming at you. Live and direct on the spot could be rock, folk, country, or hip-hop, jazz. All kind of folks that he has could be an artist or a comedian to make you laugh on the Rock Paper Podcast. Double decker fudge round, rolling round town. Shane coming at you live and direct from ground zero. He's your hero, he's your bestie. Rock Paper Podcast with Shane Presley. Podcast. Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, hanging out today with Ross Detweiler. Welcome to the show, my friend. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is, uh, man, I've been looking forward to this like for a while. Uh, really this week I've been like pumped up that it was going to happen and uh, that we getting to sit down and talk and, um, you know, we were catching up here before we hit record and like just th- just thinking about it. And like this week I was thinking about it, how like, phew, man, we're getting old. We, we've been we've known each other a <laughs> long time already, man. Yeah, a long time. It's, it's crazy to think like to already knowing somebody over 20 years and stuff like, you know, just like, I mean, I don't know. We're, I, honestly, we're not that old. But just to think like we've. I still think I'm 20 years old. Right, so knowing yeah. somebody for 20 years, they yeah. should be a family member. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly, man. So it's kind of just weird to think about. Uh, the, but we, uh, we know, we grew up here uh, in Wentzville together and um, spent a lot of time playing basketball, yeah. football. Uh, you know, it was always uh, – I didn't play baseball with you. But I, no, that was never my sport. But. <laughs> and basketball and, and- – and uh, football weren't really my sport, yeah. but you know, <laughs> right. got to stay in shape somehow. Sure, yeah. But I, uh, I think it was maybe um, 
I don't know, 96, 97 or something, maybe right around there when entering middle school or something like that when we, when we first really got to yeah, start knowing each I, other. I think it really was basketball that brought us together because we were always up at Progress Park. Oh, yeah. And, um, I mean, always playing basketball here and there. There was always pickup games. And, uh, you know, we weren't really into girls yet. We weren't <laughs> yeah. really into uh, to anything else. We listened to some music. Yep. And we played basketball with our off time. And that was about that was, it. That was life. Yeah. That was yeah. Life. Yeah. life. was a little simpler back yeah, then, right? Yeah, man. Uh, me and uh, old uh, Sean Nichols uh, spent all sorts of time up there at uh, Progress Park. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I would run into him and Matt Martin up there yeah. every once in a while. Um, and you know, they were a little bit better at basketball <laughs> than me. But right. uh, you know, I had fun. I played growing up, and you know, I. I I played as long as I possibly could, and then I just wasn't good enough to keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, that's where about was I was at. Like, I I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I was I played YMCA and whatever. I did some sort of more competitive stuff a little bit. Uh, never got like you know traveling or or you know really super involved into it. But got to play a little high school ball mm -hmm. uh, at what eighth grade team and then high school. And then uh, about my, my sophomore year, I st uh, stepped away from it. And, sophomore year for me, too. Yeah, and it was just like – me, I started having – I grew like f four inches in a month. And like I started <laughs> really having like knee problems. Yeah. And, like, and I was just like I needed to take a break. I didn't I, I didn't want to be that guy that was just like telling football stories all the time. Or, right. Yeah. Or whatever. You know, I just saw so I just – Stepped away from it, and then by that point, uh, I started working. You know, I got the job, and then it was like once you started having your car and you're working. Yeah, you like, can't yeah. wait to turn 16 so you <laughs> yeah. can be off on your own right. and everything, and then all of a sudden you get hit with a job because yeah. you got to pay for everything. Yeah, man. man. So. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think I definitely peaked in eighth grade. <laughs> I, I peaked in middle school basketball, yeah. and, and I had a ton of fun doing it, and we were good. Yeah. Then everybody else caught up height-wise. Right to me or athletic wise to me and i was very middle of the pack maybe even less than that <laughs> yeah that was uh but well, that was fun man we was like I said we're just oh, man i went back and like watched the last dance uh just yeah uh, yeah um, uh, my wife and i watched that um this quarantine or co uh, whatever you want to call uh, it i think um when we were stuck at home between spring trainings we watched that whole thing, and she's not into athletics very much, but she was – I mean, she was zoned in on that. Sure. It was It was pretty awesome. And well, actually, they interviewed um, my boss last the last two years, okay. uh, Jerry Reinsdorf. Uh, they, he was on there quite a bit. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, walking around the stadium, you don't see him much, and you see him on TV. I'm like, oh. And I, I told my older daughter, I'm like, hey, that's my boss. And she's <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I mean, just like watching that, I mean, obviously that was a, a huge part of, of that era for us, uh, in the middle school watching Jordan and, and that, all that going on. And like, and, but just like, it took me right back, man. I was like, I just, I missed that time so much. Like just hooping, yeah. hooping in the driveway, cranking up the Space Jam soundtrack or, you know. S Space Jam. <laughs> Please don't do a Space Jam too. Yeah. Please don't do it. Yeah. You're going to, Space Jam is so awesome. Oh yeah. But, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I totally agree. Um, and then even watching the Bulls, you, I'm, that team was so awesome, so mm -hmm. iconic growing up. You just flip on WGN here in St. Louis, sure. and we didn't have a basketball team, so I was never that into like professional basketball, but I'd watch the Bulls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a – I mean, we that's all we really had, you know. Obviously, uh, it's a big shout-out to w, WGN for <laughs> you know, <laughs> giving that for us. So Yeah, you just lost the Cubs last year, yeah. so, you know. All right. Maybe you can pick the podcast up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. So I don't know. Like I said, we we known each other a long time. Uh, this kind of just this conversation started. Uh, we ran into each other recently. You, you're back home in town, and we bumped into each other at uh, Sugar Fire Barbecue. Uh, speaking of Matt Martin, he was over there too. Yeah, and, and yeah, uh, so COVID wasn't that terrible for everything. All right. So we got yeah. a little. I got a little. That was the first time I've been at home since I was in high school in the summer, and I wasn't even really since I was a sophomore in high school. Yeah. In the summer, so however, she since 2002, so 18 years. Yeah. I haven't been here in the summer. Finally, got a little taste of it, but everything was mostly shut down. Sure. But uh, we got to play a little volleyball up at. Up at Sugar Fire, and that's where we ran into each other. And yeah, it was, uh, well, I remember like walking in, and like I looked across the room. I'm like, "Is that Ross?" Like I was like, "Shit, I haven't seen him in forever." You know, I was like, and so, um, and then like uh, it was like before I got out of there, though, I said, "Hey," and we got to 
catching up and and I don't know you said something uh, about like even like uh about my parents' house and like some of the parties yeah. we used to throw over there and stuff and like I don't know so it made me laugh just like thinking that you still remember all that absolutely I mean I think right now where we sit is halfway between your parents and my parents' house yeah oh yeah like I, yeah I'm, we're I'm, my home now is a mile and a half or something from right. the house I grew up in so yeah. like yeah it's a uh, it's and I haven't ventured off too far but uh, so, <laughs> no, me neither I'm, yeah. I'm only ten minutes down the road yeah. But uh, we so we used to have a lot of fun uh, growing up. Like I said, all those all those times back then. And uh, but I so I was like, I think this would be a fun, lot of fun to kind of go through some of those stories and and uh, catch up with you uh, on the mics and have fun. And you were you, when you walked in the door today, you told me this is uh, your very first podcast. Very right? first. Yeah. So I felt honored that you were uh, to uh, you know that. Get to break it in, man. Like on here on the show on the Rock Group Podcast, man. So this, I think uh, we're going strong so far. Yeah, <laughs> all downhill from here. Like, <laughs> <Perfect. laughs> Oops, and like there eighth grade, I've peaked yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I guess uh, so we we kind of lost contact around that time because, like you said, as uh, as you peaked in basketball, like you're talking about. Base- baseball started taking over. Yeah, and you uh, you started getting uh, a lot very very involved in that. And um, I knew, uh, and that's sort of when we also like split schools. Uh, you were going to uh, the other side of town, and uh, that's you know the craziest thing is people ask me where did you go to high school? I said right. oh Wentzville. Yeah, they said oh Holt yeah. or Timberland, I'm right? Like, Oh, okay, then I have to go through the whole yeah. story. So actually, when I was in high school, right. they split, and Timberland actually became a school. Sure. But, you know, uh, I guess I would say Holt, but we never knew it as Holt when right. we were actually there until there was a Timberland. Yeah, right, exactly, yeah. Uh, but even though we were all still same town, and stuff, I just didn't get to see you in the halls every day or different right. things like that. So it wasn't like we were uh, really able to stay, you know, we'd bump into each other on the weekends at a, somebody's house or whatever it was right. every now and then or something like that, but... Uh, so that's where things kind of started to like, you know, where I didn't get to see you as often, like I said, when, from growing up in the days of, in the gym and stuff like that. So. Yeah. And then, uh, I think my sophomore year, um, I started playing, so I played baseball summer, fall, spring. I had a little bit of time off in the winter and that, that was my last year playing basketball and I was year round and all the baseball is pretty much traveling everywhere doing, um, uh, college showcases, you know, uh, MLB showcases, whatever it was for scouts. And, uh, I really didn't have, and I still haven't ever been on a spring break. (laughs) I'm 34 now and I have never spring breaked. (laughs) So I don't know what I'm missing. I've never, um, gone down, uh, a river on a tube. Oh man. Yeah. I've never been floating. Well, we need to do that. That's yeah, for sure. everybody, everybody has told me you're missing out on yeah. floating. Um, what I, I pretty much haven't had a social life in three seasons out of the year, and the only season I had a social life was winter, where right. nobody goes outside. <laughs> yeah, right. so, so that's where we're at right now. <laughs> yeah, but not complaining. Um, turned out to be great for me. Um, I'm I'm still loving most of it, uh, but you know it. it it's it's one of those things you got to sacrifice a bunch to mm-hmm. to gain. I, I went after my dream. Um, you know, still haven't had the dream of winning a World Series, yeah, or getting to one, or getting past the first round of the playoffs. But you know, sure, you know, I've uh, I've fulfilled. I've checked off a lot of boxes. We'll say that. Yeah, definitely, man. So it was it uh, was it that around sophomore year was that when you started kind of realizing no this could be a possibility no i was kind of pushed i've always so i have a brother that's five years older than me also left-handed like me built a lot a lot like me um and he was really good at baseball right so i always kind of aspired to be that i could see myself in the future doing what he does um and by that time he was in his sophomore year in college and he was a junior college player of the year through the whole nation that year. Okay. So I was like, oh man, well, if he can do it, then maybe there's a chance. Mm-hmm. So maybe I saw it a little bit, but I never really believed in myself a lot until my sophomore year of college. So I always had 
the talent to do it. I just didn't realize it. I just wanted to be out there playing with my friends. Right. Just and it, it became a normal life. Like if I wasn't playing, I didn't really know where I was. I was kind of lost. Kind of like us going to the gym. Like, if you didn't have basketball, like, where would, what would we have done? Yeah, right. Yeah. Maybe Nintendo 64. Oh, there was a lot of that done, too. Because <laughs> <laughs> on road trips, right. what else are you going to do when you're in the hotel? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, uh, yeah. So, I don't know, man. That's just like a – so, it's just kind of crazy because it's like – that's the dream. You know, we all grew up – like, I had – ambitions again we're talking about basketball i had ambitions like i was like yep gonna go pro it's gonna happen you know and then you realize you know even though i'm the tallest guy in our middle school at, right you know, yeah it was, it was so easy to spot you yeah. too you just look up and you're head and shoulders above yeah. everybody else you know but then you realize in the grand scheme you know like you're still just a guy and like there's uh, hundreds and thousands of other guys that are you know can do the same thing or whatever so it's really hard to you know uh, realize like that sometimes like that you know, maybe that's not going to happen but but for you like you, you did put in the work and it and it worked out like so sophomore you said sophomore year in high school you start or college you started realizing like so realizing, this is something yeah. i can i can really make this uh, career path yeah um so out of out of high school after my senior year there there's a draft where they take um i mean anybody who's 18 and above they can they can take you i was not taken and I was just like, man, I really thought putting all this work in the last two years, I would have been taken yeah. and, you know, I would have been given everything and been been rushed up there. Um, and thank God I wasn't because I had a totally different mindset. I was so immature. I wouldn't have been able to handle it. I would have fizzled out in a second. Um, now, in in college, after my freshman year, I started to mature a little bit. My body started uh, catching up with me. Um, I've always been very thin, um, and I started gaining a little weight. They put us in the weight room just about every day, I mean, working our asses off. Right. And um, so then I get pulled aside by, by my coach. I, I had an okay freshman year. I broke my hand actually on my birthday, got hit with a line drive, oh, shattered my hand, um, which made me come back in the summer and play Legion ball because I was young enough after my uh, freshman year, and I didn't give up a run the entire summer there. Then I go back to school, and I think that built a little confidence, actually. As um, I go back to school in the fall, start it, it goes pretty well, and then I just have a really good spring. Halfway through, I get called by Team USA. They say, hey, for uh, instead of going, I, I signed to go to Cape Cod. And instead of going there, they said, hey, do you want to come to Team USA? I'm just like, uh, sure. I'm not really sure what that is, but it sounds kind of awesome, right? right. Yeah, man. Because um, I'm thinking like dream team type stuff. <laughs> yeah. you know? uh, so then I get pulled. So I actually go to Cape Cod for a week. And then the, tr the Team USA trials, they take, uh, I don't know how many people. And they they cut it down to 25, I think. They, so they say they take 50, and they cut it down to 25. So I'm at these trials for a week, and I don't think it goes that well. I give up a few home runs, um, and w we're with the best college uh, players in the country. So I'm just like, oh, man, these guys, they, they got me. Whatever. We're sitting in dorms with them. And there was actually a guy from Troy with me, uh, Aaron Schaefer. I don't know if you've heard his name at all. Mm -hmm. um, he's a year younger than me. Okay. But he was pushed up to my age group. Uh, that's how well he was doing. He was up at Wichita State. And uh, so I kind of like seeing a familiar face, kind of got buddy-buddy with him. You know, it's like, thank God there's somebody that I can walk through with. Because I'm not – I wasn't – much of a social guy. Okay. I was, um, you know, I, I wasn't going to be outgoing and go talk to somebody and there's 50 people and some of them are in the same conference. Some of them are at the same school. The clicks start to happen. Right. I'm left on my own. Finally, Aaron shows up. I'm like, there we go. I know somebody. So settled down, uh, somehow made the team and, uh, had, had a pretty decent summer with team USA. And that's like, that was the tops of the top. And, I still didn't know, like, okay, I'm, I'm there now. I need to, you know, my, my, my mindset still wasn't there. Right. It was just like I was playing in the moment, then I get back to college, then I play in the moment again. Mm -hmm. um, and then we started talking about the draft, which was crazy. Like, I, 
I don't know. I, I still wasn't quite there, but um, I still had another year of college to go too. But we were already talking about the draft my sophomore year, so I started thinking, okay, maybe there's a chance I'm actually better at some people than this, and I'm I don't really, you know, everybody around me. We're not just having fun. We're actually we're we're going towards something. I want to make this a career of mine. Mm-hmm. So you get uh, 2007. Right. Yeah. 2007 you, was the junior year. That was my draft. And yeah. you get, uh, you get so like you get a call. I guess actually let, let, <laughs> let's let's back up yeah. to uh, the Team USA. Okay. So my, my pitching coach at the time pulled me aside, and I, for whatever reason, he's like, I would never want you on my college team. You would never survive on my team. Like you're not good enough. I'm just like. <laughs> Uh, what? <laughs> Thanks. Okay, I right. just I just started gaining confidence. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then he knocks me back down. But then, um, but I think um, the manager at the time was was Tim Corbin. He's at Vanderbilt, and they've had an unbelievable success down there. Uh, one of the best programs from the last ten years. And he pulled me aside one time. He's like, "Hey, I think you really have a chance at the first round." I was like. What? First rounds for like these five, six people over here and then a bunch of high school guys. Uh, These guys are way better than me. He's like, no, I really think if you have a good junior year, you have a great chance at the first round. So I was like, oh, shit. (laughs) All right. This kind of can become real now. So. uh, So, yeah, then then fast forward 2007, my my junior year, I'm going in with a lot of confidence. Um and confidence is key when you're pitching. Right. Um, have a really good year. Almost throw a no hitter in in the conference um, conference tournament. Um, and, and I'm rolling. I'm rolling, man. It's 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 going it's going well for me. And uh, I get a call from ESPN. And this and to this day, this still has been the only ESPN uh, telecasted. And they said, hey. Uh, we're going to have a handful of guys that, and mind you, we were terrible at, at Missouri State when I was down there. We, so I was one of the only ones that was available to go fly down to, to Orlando where they had it in, in Disney World at the uh, Wide World of Sports. And they said, we want you to be there for it. So it was me and two other guys. One was a high school guy from Canada and the other one, uh, no, the other one was a high school guy from, from California. So I'm the only college guy there. And I take my two brothers, my two older brothers with me, and we're sitting there in suits. I've never worn a suit in my life before. I'm super uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, first guy gets picked, I think, second or third overall by the Cubs. And then um, they're coming out. We're sitting on a stage, and then there's 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 stairs – and then there's stairs up and then another stage where the commissioner is calling out the picks. I think they were trying to make it like the NFL because mm-hmm. the NFL gets a ton of publicity and you know, a ton of money for their, for their draft. Um, didn't work out for the, for the, for major league baseball. They, right. This is the only year they had it. Luckily it was 07 and I was there. Um, so then they come out and the nationals are picking and they come out and they, they have the camera right on the other guy, the guy from Canada. And I'm just like, oh, man, I'm going to be the only one up here on this stage. Well, at least I have my brothers with me. You know, we can kind of laugh this off in in the future or whatever. Um, Then all of a sudden, the camera just cuts right to me, and they call my name. It's like, (laughs) what? Like deer in the headlights. I, I, I sat there for a second and, you know, uh, hugged one of my brothers. My like, I, I didn't know what to do. I, I did, and uh, then uh, they're like, "Get up there, go!" So I, I walk up on stage, put the hat on, go hold the jersey up, shake hands with the commissioner and everything. Still don't know what I'm doing. Have to go do my first interview I've ever done. Uh, and the the Nationals reporters are sitting there grilling me asking me who I am. And then they come back and they take the jersey away from me and they take the hat <laughs> away from me saying, uh, oh, NCAA rules say that you can't have these. All right. So they, uh, But the guy from Canada got to keep his. Oh, yeah. Canadian rules, I, I guess. Can, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Huh. It, was, uh, it was definitely a, a crazy day. It was a different experience. Um, 
ESPN then sent me the DVDs. Still haven't watched them. Oh yeah, I don't think I will. <laughs> I don't know. They're uh, I don't I don't like seeing myself on video yeah. or hearing myself. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I like I, I'm with you. Like it is. It's definitely weird. Um, but especially now with your with your children, like I think that would be something cool someday. Whenever yeah, whenever the time's right to sit and yeah, for sure. And and I wonder. I haven't asked my wife to this day if she was watching on TV or not. We, we were together then. We were yeah. we had just started dating, uh, maybe two months before. Oh, maybe I got that wrong. <laughs> maybe maybe got that far. Down. <laughs> like four or five months. Yeah. I mean, not, um, we were dating for a little bit, and she, I told her I was going down for the draft, and she's like, "I don't know what you're talking about, but okay, I'll see you next week." <laughs> So it was, uh, it was, it was crazy. It was, it was definitely a different experience. And it's not one I've ever talked about before. Yeah, I'm glad you get to share it with me today, man. That was a, uh, um, I don't know. That's just uh, super wild to think about, man. Just like that whole, that whole ride, you know. It's just it, like- it's, it's like an out of body experience because you, I didn't think it could ever happen to me. Mm-hmm. I get. I mean, I, 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 I just think like that's probably part of what pushed you. To keep doing it because I think maybe, you know, some people, you know, I feel like maybe you would have believed like, you know, whatever eighth grade, you're like, yep, I'm going pro, it's going to happen. And like, you know, people start getting a big head and cocky about it or whatever. And then like, and you know, I'm sure people just don't want to work with them or whatever. You know, right. Like, yeah. I mean, it's of- easy to get burned out too. Right. Cause there, there was one time when I was young, um, I got burned out a little bit on baseball yeah. and Man, I started playing hockey. I started really liking hockey a lot. And then I hit a growth spurt and grew out of all my pads right <laughs> away. And my parents were like, nope, yeah. <laughs> you're not playing this sport. <laughs> so so I think there – yeah, I think there's there's definitely something there yeah. for me to – you know. And then once I, once I realized I could actually do something, I then I can turn it on. Then I could – and I was around people – that could really help me with that. Um, wh- whereas if I was younger, I don't know where I would have been. Right. I pulled up. Uh, you actually have a Wikipedia page, oh, which I think is cool because uh, I think you're probably the first one of the first people I've actually got talked to that actually has their own Wikipedia. But it said May 18, two thousand nine. You get your major league debut. My, my first start. Your first start. My debut my... is actually, I think, September 7th of 07. Okay. I think. Don't hold me to that. It might have been yeah. September 5th now that I'm thinking about it. But um, I actually, my my wife's uh, roommate in college, her dad worked for Wilson, the and they make gloves and, and, and a bunch of other sports stuff. Um, but he had front row tickets in Atlanta and that, that September 5th or September 7th, whatever it was. Uh, and he said, Hey, he, he asked my, my wife at the time and, and her friend, Laura, Hey, do you guys want to come down and, um, you know, we'll just be at that game and we'll go out afterwards, whatever. And they said, no, that ends up being my major league <laughs> debut. <laughs> they had a chance to be in the stands, and they turned it down. Right. No thanks. They they didn't want to travel down to Atlanta. Um, we didn't think I was going to pitch, sure. but I got in there, um, and man, I I faced Andrew Jones. Oh yeah, which I mean, I grew up watching Andrew yeah. Jones on TV. So yeah, we, I was, had, we had TBS man. We yeah, got, we got to watch a lot of Braves. Baseball. Absolutely, yeah. So I was like, I don't know, another out of body experience for me. Um, it was so cool though, and then I still I still give her shit to this day. Like, you could have been there, I right. totally could have been there, but you weren't. <laughs> uh, so yeah, okay. So that was your first start in in two thousand nine. Two thousand nine, first start, right. against, yeah, against. And the I read Pirates. I read you had six strikeouts, three runs allowed, and five innings, and like I was like, man, that that's cool. Like it's it's fun to. That obviously it's all obviously very well documented, but just think about like that day, like in that call, like to, you're going to start for the Nationals and uh, yeah, I was so I was in Double A and we were in Reading, Pennsylvania. I got called into the office by the manager, and at this point, it's I don't even know how my season was going. I I don't yeah. know whatever. I, I get called in there, and the pitching coach is in there too, and he's got a big smile on his face. So I'm just like, <laughs> what is going on? Um, and they're like, uh, they want you up in Washington to start tomorrow. 
because it was my start day. That day was my start day. So usually that kind of said like they don't talk to you your start day. They stay away from you. They yeah. let you go do your thing. Like, nope, you're starting in Washington tomorrow. Um, here's the information, how you're going to get there, everything. Uh, here's your plane ticket and uh, good luck. I, we never want to see you again. <laughs> so, unfortunately, yeah, they saw me again. Right. But, uh, but yeah, it, it, was pretty, it was pretty cool. Another surreal experience. I mean, um, I remember going, I think, through the first three innings pretty easily. And either the third or the fourth inning, I just made a mistake and it got hit out dead center. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, whoa, can't make mistakes here. Right. So it was like one of the learning experiences. Like you cannot make those type of mistakes. You got to keep the ball down. Anybody can hit a home run. I mean, these are grown men. This is, this is their life, that their livelihood that they're, that, uh, that they're doing. And it's, um, you know, I was 23. I think the guy that hit the home run off me, maybe in his early sure. 30s or so, he's a grown man. All right. So it was like a humbling experience. Yeah. Um, luckily, I they took me out after five. I thought I could have gone longer. Whatever. That's, yeah. But uh, it's pretty you know, good first first day though. Like. Yeah, I I think I was in line for the win. We gave the bullpen blew it, mm -hmm. um, which became. Uh, a thing that year i ended up not getting a win that year yeah. i think i had three or four games blown i didn't throw that well but i had a chance to win a few yeah uh what so what when you're going uh i mean i'm, I'm sure like like a lot of there's like the your game day do you have like a game day ritual kind of like our superstitions Man, yeah and stuff? i like, did when i was younger definitely yeah. but um as I got older and the older the guys that I played with, I realized that those rituals just are kind of yeah. unnecessary. Um, but so when I was in DC um, and things were actually going, going really well, like one of my best years was, was 2012. And um, I didn't notice anything, but my wife would be like, yeah, you could definitely tell it's your start day. You're, you're very edgy <laughs> You know, we, we just stayed away from you, whatever. Um, but I knew I was so nervous all day long. I just couldn't eat. I, I, I could do dry pasta or maybe a little butter on it and I could do a smoothie and that was about it. So I was going out there and burning all of these calories with nothing in my body, right. which was absolutely terrible. <laughs> like if I could go back, I would, I don't know. I don't even know if I could like somehow figure out just eat. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Just eat. Tonight's going to be over. Tomorrow's going to happen. It's okay. Just eat. But, I mean, I went through like two years of doing that. Just so nervous I couldn't eat on my start days. Yeah. And uh, then, then I got thrown into the bullpen and you can be up at any time. And that's what really taught me to settle down. Okay. Yeah. Well, it was one question I did have written down for you and I, maybe, that's, maybe that's your answer. But if you had an uh, um, you know, opportunity to go back and give yourself – advice what would that be in the slow, slow down, slow down. <laughs> yeah yeah and um every i don't know it's like every i don't want to make it seem like every start's not important because it definitely is but every start isn't going to make or break you right um every outing is not going to make or break you 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 can you can have some leeway in there obviously you have to have more good than bad um and the better you are, the more good you have than obviously the more good you have than the bad. But it's uh, I, I just thought in the moment, every single start was the most important and I could get sent down to the minor leagues after every start or I could be an all star after every start. Like it, it was, There's so much there that I, I just need to just be even mm -hmm. and not so up and so down. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I really wish, uh, we, you know, here obviously here in St. I didn't have the the network or anything, so I didn't get to watch a, a ton of uh, your games and stuff. You know, we we get a couple uh, opportunities a year, maybe when mm -hmm. when uh, there be a um, a series with St. Louis or something like that, right? right yeah. um, but it wasn't it was, didn't get to catch a lot of Ross Detweiler games because you know it just wasn't on TV a lot here in St. Louis, so it was hard to. For me to really catch a lot of them, but um, I really wish I could have watched you pitch more and stuff. And uh, but uh, you did, uh, you said uh, you mentioned 
getting to pitch against Andrew Jones, and then later you got to wear that uh, Braves uniform. Yeah, that was and that, like, that was crazy. I was like, and I don't know for me, like obviously it's always been Cardinals, you know, growing up. But if I had to pick a second one, it probably would have been Braves because I watched so much. TBS uh, and like <laughs> Chip, yeah. Chipper Jones and Maddox and yeah. you know they had a like those early '90s teams were so good and like and right uh, mid '90s I guess whatever but yeah like yeah it was, no I think it was '90 because I was there in uh, '15 and they did the the 10 year anniversary or 20 year sorry 20 year anniversary of their World Series team yeah of their like their guys right and, and they all showed up it was it was really cool so what's that like for them you get you get to like shake some, some of their hands and meet yeah some of guys just and... get talk to them and man i've been i played against andrew jones early in my career right. i've been out with him a couple of times or i'm sorry chipper jones yeah. sorry i've played with chipper jones um you know early in my career and it, it was really cool seeing an icon like that out there and uh and just knowing that he's another person yeah and that's, you know, I, I held these guys up to on a pedestal so big. Like when I first signed with DC, Dimitri Young was there. And that was a guy I grew up watching with the Cardinals. Yeah. And I've played with, you know, Ray, uh, Ray King was there at the same time. And I'm just like, man, these guys I'd watch day in, day out for playing for the Cardinals. And now they're my teammates. Like it just didn't seem real <laughs> yeah. to me. But that's something you had to really like. They're real people, and um, it helped because both those guys are absolutely hilarious. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's just one of those things you get to get over and realize, hey, um, you're teammates with him now, so yeah. just act normal. Don't just be don't, <laughs> don't, don't be a, a huge fan in the in the locker room. I I get that. Like I mean, I, I do that all around town here, and uh, uh, you know, I'll. I'll talk about him a lot but i've been fortunate enough to meet and become really good friends with uh steve ewing now uh mm -hmm. you know of the urge and he uh for me you know he's he's a rock star you know and so like, absolutely i grew up again same kind of thing for you with baseball i was grew up listening to the urge and and you know and we all grew up listening yeah. to the urge and so in like St. Louis, yeah. so now I, that i get to like you know i walk into steve's hot dogs and he's like hey what's up shane i'm like that's he knows you by name. Yeah, that's, super, that's pretty cool. You know, so, like, the first couple of times hanging out, it was always, like, the whole, like, all right, don't nerd out too much, you know, play it cool, and, like, just talk. Let, let him know you're a fan, but right. not too much yeah. of a fan. <laughs> I got He's just a dude. He's a great guy. He's, yeah. And, like, and that's what, uh, you know, it's, but it's part of me still, you know, the 13-year-old kid or whatever. I get, Absolutely. I still, I still get excited and hang with these guys, but I'm like, all right, just play cool, act cool, act normal. You yeah, know, like, so one of my wife's really good friends uh, married Clint Lowry from, oh, yeah. from Seven Dust, and we went to dinner one time, and I think I nerded out a little too much. We haven't been invited back <laughs> since. <laughs> but, you know, it, it was cool to go to dinner with him, pick his brain a little bit. And, yeah. And uh, yeah, I, was, uh, I blew it. <laughs> uh, well, maybe maybe Clint will listen and give you a second chance. Come on, Clint! <laughs> uh, another uh, local guy doing really well, man. That's like you know, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool that he's uh, to see what he's doing. For and himself. I d yeah, when I became a fan, I didn't even know he's a local guy. Yeah, and then all of a sudden he's a local guy. I'm like, I'm a bigger fan. All right? Now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you uh, so speaking of, let's we're talking music now. Uh, what? Do you, do you get to listen to a lot of you like when you're training or uh, stuff? You oh, put a lot of headphones, oh put boy. the headphones on. And yes, when I I'm happy when I have my headphones on. Yeah. But uh, most of the time, it's hardcore rap and Latin music <laughs> yeah. that I'm forced to listen to. Um, but in my headphones, I, a lot of rock, a lot of country, um, really anything that's going to sound good in person. That's what I want to hear. Yeah. What's uh, what's your current like? What's some of the stuff that's on your, oh, on, your you, on your Spotify you, shuffle? You don't want to know my Spotify right now because <laughs> right before I left, it was JoJo Siwa. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was my daughter's. There you go. Yeah, my my daughter <laughs> take it over. So yeah. Um, now we have uh, actually quite a bit of country. We've been in a country kick now. Yeah. Um, I do that. I kind of go in waves. Like some, yeah. I'll be in. Be in a mood for a while, and then I'll go switch over to doing a lot more rock for a while and whatever well, it is. When I'm by myself, I'm not by myself that much anymore with kids. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I'm by myself, I'm definitely going rock, and I'd even go like harder rock. Um, 
But with kids, like, country is a happy medium for everybody. Sure. Like, we can all get along with that. And it's not the new poppy country. It's, like, older, kind of raspy, mm-hmm. more more of that type of country. Yeah. More real country than, than pop. Right. Yeah. yeah I'm not I'm really good into – there's a couple of newer guys, but, like – I don't really get into a lot of the radio country anymore no, and stuff. No, it's it, it's bad. And I was uh, I'm getting my older daughter into classic rock. I found one station up in uh, Chicago this year, a, a good classic rock station, and she started actually singing along with a few of the songs. So okay. I feel like I won as a dad. That's yeah. one of those points. Yeah, man, uh, for sure. That's uh, I, I I don't know. Obviously, I don't have children yet, but that's my one of my biggest things. Like I I collect uh, a lot of vinyl records and I and have all this stuff like. And I hope to someday, like, that my children will appreciate it as much as I do. Absolutely. And, like, and fall in love with all these things and be able to, like, introduce them to all my favorite music. And then they, you know, sing along to all of it, too, or whatever and stuff. So, yeah, uh, kind of pass that torch and kind of thing. So, yeah. And, and you know, the one thing that I'm not I, – I wish I could go back and do over would be going to more concerts. Because when, when we were younger – that that's when the concerts were the best. Yeah, and I wasn't into concerts at all until I was in shoot like sixth, seventh grade. I went to my first one, some okay. like Wallflowers, by the way. Wallflowers, yeah. all right, nice. And uh, and then, I mean, I, I didn't get to go to much because I I was out playing baseball sure. in the summer, and that's I still haven't gotten to that many concerts. <laughs> right. Um, but. When they come through stadiums that I'm playing at, I'll st- I'll stick around and then I'll try to do my best to meet the band afterwards. And you know that's so cool to me. I like a little fanboy running around trying to meet those <laughs> right. guys. And uh, um, but yeah, I wish I could do more concerts because I think concerts are just the absolute epitome of music. Yeah, I got. Um, well, obviously, it's a up until this year uh, was a giant part of my life, mm. uh, you know, and, and still is as much as I can. Um, but I didn't, I, I was feel like I got into it even late. Like I remember, uh, supposed to speak in the first concert, my first, uh, one that I really recall, like asking my parents to take me to was, um, maybe nine, 98, 97, 98, something like right. Whatever. It was matchbox 20, mm. uh, when, when they hit huge and it was, uh, semi-sonic and soul asylum opened up. Oh, and, nice. Uh, I had the Soul Asylum album. Yeah. <laughs> and I asked my mom to take up me and me and uh, Chuck Sweeney. Yeah. I uh, went to, uh, it was, uh, you know, now it's Scott, or Inter- Enterprise, whatever, or it was Scott Trade. What, and, what was it when yeah. you went? Keel Center? I think it was still Keel then. Keel? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, we went and uh, I remember, I, I guess mom, I don't think she was really into it. I think she sat outside like, smoking all night but uh but me and chuck had a great time and i was like you know it was really a unique you know cool experience of that's awesome seeing a band for the first time live like that and stuff so um but i really didn't like i didn't have like the older brother or cousins i have, I have older cousins but I never really had anybody that was like introducing me to music and stuff like, yeah. like that taking me to shows or anything so i didn't really have like it wasn't until um like right after high school that i really started going to a lot more shows uh, I started getting involved locally here with some guys from school, started playing in bands and started go seeing those bands play live. Uh, and I kind of started that snowball to where I was like going out to shows like every weekend or a couple times a week. And, oh, cool. and so like, yeah. that's really where this all started. This pot, you know, even getting to this podcast and because I started having all these friends in music, man. You, you, Absolutely. So it was fun to become buddies with all these people and getting to, you know, what a one band introduces and the next one and now so on. And like, so, um, you know, music's definitely been a huge part of my life. Yeah. And I have a brother who's eight years older than me as well. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I remember him working out in the basement and he would be listening to Rage Against the Machine. There you go. And that's where my love of rock came from was Rage Against the Machine oh, yeah. in the basement on one of those little, uh, CD players or it might've even been a tape at the time. Yeah. Um, in a little boom box and probably terrible sound, but I thought it was so cool. Yeah. I thought it's the coolest thing ever. So as soon as I could buy one, I got the Rage Against the Machine album. There you go, album. man. Yeah. Yeah. Man. yeah that's still so good. Like, yeah. That's a the original album. Yeah. I mean, that, that's one that does get you fired up, man. Put Absolutely. That, crank that up in your headphone. That'll definitely do the trick. Yes. Yeah. And I'll listen to I, – I can fall asleep to that now. Like on a long bus trip. Well, when we were in the minor leagues, long bus trips, it'll just pop on – 
Yeah, whatever. I'll just fall asleep to it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I never got to see Rage live. I did see uh, Tom Morello came to town on a, uh, for a point fest with uh, Street Sweeper Social Club. And uh, I remember he, uh, you know, we're all packed over there on the side stage for him. And, and Tom, like, uh, says something, you know, this is at uh, Riverport. Uh, mm. And there's people, like, on the back side of the lawn because it's in the front parking lot there. And, and he's like, I see you up there on the hill. You're all up there like, fuck you. I won't do what you tell me. You know, <laughs> yeah. Like, and, yeah. Uh, and you're like, oh, what? Yeah. Yes. And that was all like, that was like as close as I've got to uh, actual rage. We're like, at least. That one, counts. One, I'll one, ca- one I'll line. Count that. Yeah. yeah so I'll count it. Tom saying one line from a hit song of theirs. But they were like, yeah. uh, but they were, you know, they were supposed to come to town this year. And obviously that got uh, shut down just like everything else. And Man, uh, it's been a tough year. So that's kind of what I wanted to bring it up. I want to talk to you about 2020 for you and pitching because oh, no. obviously it's been a weird year for yeah. uh, baseball too, just like everything. It's been uh, – but I did see, which I thought was like if you're going to uh, highlight anything of it, um, I did uh, – I saw on social media you have a, you had a picture with you and your daughter's uh, – your cardboard cutout. Yeah, cardboard, yeah, cardboard guard, cutouts. And uh, I was like, uh, like uh, at least that was cool that they got to be represented in the, in the right. stand. Right, yeah, it's so weird, man. Uh, I don't know if I could do it again either. It was, I didn't know how it was going to be. Um, and then we had, so we got sent home from spring training without a clue of what was going on. Um, luckily I'm from Missouri, so we didn't shut down as quick as some of the other States. And, uh, we were in Arizona at the time, but we didn't know. So we we jump in the car, two kids and a dog and, and my wife and my truck. We just go. We start driving and we drive straight through for 24 hours because we didn't know if we can go to a – we didn't know if hotels were open along the way. We didn't know if we can get to a grocery store, anything. So we get home and like I don't – yeah, I mean it's terrible to say. I don't really remember the last like hour and a half, two hours <laughs> of, of my trip because I was so kind of delirious. Yeah, we right. were switching on and off but you never really get that good sleep between. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so, so we get home and <laughs> – the neighbors are like, oh, hey, what are you doing home? We're like, oh, we came – we had to get to the grocery store. We didn't have anything in the house. They're like, oh, okay. Well, grocery stores are pretty much fine. Yeah. They're like, ah. All right. So we we start quarantine life. I, I don't like calling it quarantine life. We weren't really quarantined. We're, and we, we start life at home. I don't yeah. know. All right, quarantine life. <laughs> yeah. So we start quarantine life and that was the first time I'd been at home in the summer, spring – and it was kind of awesome. Nice weather. I'm like, oh, this is why people live in Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty cool. Um, and then so I'm working out the whole time because in my head and in all the emails from MLB we're getting, uh, the Players Association actually, not MLB because they were terrible. Um, we're just like, oh, well, maybe it's next week. Oh, well, maybe it's next week. Oh, maybe it's next week. And, I, and we were home for like three months doing that so we're just like all right i have to be ready next week I, and then towards the end we're like all right well we haven't faced any hitters so a lot of the cardinals guys live in the area so luckily we were able to get in contact with them and we're like hey i need to throw live and they're like we need to see live pitching so we go out there on just a, a, an old high school field uh-huh. um and we start we start just playing, well, there's no defense. I'm throwing against them. We found some some high school catchers um, along the way that helped us out a ton. And it was, man, it was really cool because it took you back to like the Sandlot days. Yeah. And you you know you're playing against really, really good players. And obviously in, in, in St. Louis, um, everybody – puts all the Cardinals on a pedestal. So no, if they've thrown one pitch, if they've had one at bat in the major league, sure. they're automatically better than anybody else. Uh, it's true. Story. From any other team. Yeah. It's fact. <laughs> so like, <laughs> so we're, we're, I'm, I'm, you know, talking to my neighbors or I'm talking to my wife's parents or even my parents and like, Oh, was your head, you know, like, Oh, who'd you face? And I start naming off names and like, Oh my God, really? <laughs> Like, you know, I play against these people day in and day out, right? <laughs> right? Like, I've been doing this for 13 years now, yeah. and you're still, you know, there. there's two uh, rookies there that were actually, they had good years this year, but it was before this year. And they're like, I can't believe that they're just working out with you. I'm like, 
<laughs> I'm supposed to be the veteran here. Come on. It's my own parents doing this. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm, yeah. Well, I'm sure a lot of that, like, they know, obviously, they know what you're doing, but you're still, like, just a little kid to them. Kind right. Of, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. they don't They don't see you as this veteran of, base, you know, pro- professional baseball yeah, and stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I really don't see myself that way either. And right. I think it comes from them, too. Yeah. But, you know, who knows what would have happened if I was drafted by the Cardinals. Yeah. But, uh, so, we get done with that. Um, and finally, we're like, all right, we're leaving next week to go to Chicago for another spring training. I'm like, what have I been doing this whole time? I've been having spring training by myself here. So get up to Chicago, have this spring training, which is super weird. Um, we're not sure what's going on. So my family stayed home. I'm living in a hotel. Uh, and I think that was three, four weeks long, which we have a – a 10 month old now. So she was, she she was three months mm-hmm. and that's kind of tough to leave. Right. Um, you miss so much. And so up there, then finally they're like, all right, season's starting, but no fans. Yeah. We're like, wait, right. What's what? This? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it just felt like spring training the entire year. Well, not even, I don't even want to say spring training because there's also fans at spring training. It just, it just didn't feel right. Mm-hmm. But they pumped crowd noise in. You know where they got that crowd noise from? No. A video game. Oh yeah. They didn't use crowd noise <laughs> from a from a video or from you know something uh, years before. Yeah, just they use it from a video game. Just put a mic next to the show. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's somehow, and right. it sounded super fake. Yeah. Um, and sitting down in the bullpen, they turned those speakers on loudest because they're coming from the outfield to the infield. And man, there uh, it was deafening out there. Like you couldn't hear anything but fake crowd noise. Like you're just trying to talk to the guy next to you. Plus, we're wearing masks, so you can't like lip read or anything. It, it's just it was bad. So like, all right, well, we'll just have to get through this for like a week or two, right? And then they're gonna start allowing fans because somebody's gonna make their money at some point. Nope, no. Nope. We go through an entire season like that, and <laughs> at, at times, I think at times it helped. Most of the time, though, it was miserable. Mm-hmm. Like you, you're just stuck out there with your own thoughts, which is great if you're doing great, which is pretty bad <laughs> if you're doing poorly and things can snowball pretty quick. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's uh, it was definitely um, weird, weird times, man. and like, and it's strange to even to watch it. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't seek it to see a ton, but just like even like watching. The World Series happening as we're recording this, like you're there's very little people there, you know, and it's like, and yeah, and there's I just saw somebody, uh, one of the ex players offered up on this thing I, I that I'm in, um, they're going for over like 1200 a ticket, yeah, so it was like it was nearly six grand for or five grand for four tickets, all right. Like what? And they're only allowing like eleven thousand of them or something. It's like, jeez, yeah. <laughs> all right. Just to go see two teams, and you probably had to buy them way in advance, so you don't even know who's going to be in the World Series. Yeah. If your team's going to be there, you're just here's five grand. Uh, hopefully, our team's there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I have no idea how that works, but that it's weird, man. Because you know, yeah, like I said, you're used to seeing pack stands and yeah, uh, you know. So yeah, it's very. Very strange, uh, but I said, like I said, a senior, you and you're posing with your cardboard cutouts of your daughters. Yeah. There. That, was, that was pretty cute. Man. Yeah. Was, uh, so that's what actually started me on Instagram. Yeah. Because uh, I I'd, I'd never really posted much. All right. So I, I did. I I got so bored because there's nothing to do. There's literally nothing to do. We go hotel, stadium, and we can only be at the stadium for five hours, and then straight back to the hotel. Nothing else. Yeah. It's like what? What are we supposed to do with our time? Yeah. So I got super bored. Decided Instagram was the way to go for a couple of weeks, and All right there we go. Yeah. You uh, up in Chicago? Did did you find what was your favorite pizza place to hit out when you got to go out? Oh, I hope there's no Chicago listeners. <laughs> um, I never really went out no, yeah. for pizza. Yeah. Uh, I I hate deep dish pizza. Really? I Man. do. 
I, I th- it's lasagna. Yeah, it's not pizza. Well, it's lasagna. It's delicious. I like it is. lasagna actually. So it's not <laughs> yeah. lasagna. It's it's something yeah. else. Uh, I uh, I don't know. I'm a fan. I'm, I'm uh, obviously uh, there's not many pizza I don't like. Uh, I'm uh, I like to to sample all of it. And um, but uh, there's a bun- There's a couple of really good spots up there that I, I enjoy. Like we'll we've done a couple cards Cub series up there and different you know stuff like that. We'll make a weekend of it and run up to Chicago and uh, and. Uh, stuff like you know whatever it is and and i've got to try a couple of different spots around town so yeah yeah i'm uh i like uh luminati's i like uh um yeah you know what we we would get luminati's but we would get thin crust sure. so yeah. it's i don't know if that counts yeah. but it was really good yeah. I, I really like the thin crust yeah i uh it's funny though because then like the same thing like uh i don't know if you ever get into that like barstool sports and stuff that guy does that the pizza reviews and stuff and like and he comes to St. Louis and, you know, tries our thin crust here. Oh, I saw, yeah, I saw him do the, and, the emo thing. Yeah, and he yeah. trashed it. Like, you know, he's like, what is yeah, this? he's cr- like, this isn't even pizza yeah, or something like cr- that. Cracker, uh, you know, cheesy cracker yeah. and stuff. And like, so, it's like, well, yeah, but it's delicious. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. so I just think it's funny how so many, you know, it's, it's very divided, you know. It, it uh, is. But, and so they did a thing on the scoreboard with um, some of the guys. And they asked him, like, what, what do you, what toppings do you put on your hot dog? Yeah. And if they said ketchup mustard anything like that if it wasn't like a chicago dog All right they would get booed even though they would boo their own people <laughs> yeah and it's like what well, if okay so i have to have your taste if i play here yeah right. <laughs> yeah i uh man i tell you working in the school has ruined me for ketchup i don't want to ever like, <laughs> don't, it's like those kids just will eat it on everything like, yeah, well okay do you do you want to hear a disgusting story that ruined me on ketchup well, let's hear it um, I, so 2007, I was just drafted and, um, being from the middle of Missouri, I don't have that much interaction with, um, Dominicans. So I go down and play in the Gulf coast league, which is mostly Dominicans. Um, so it's a huge culture shock in, in, at the beginning. Um, but you don't realize what you take for granted at home, right? Like ketchup or like mayonnaise. Um, so those things, we, and they, they, at the stadium at this point, food wasn't really like, you didn't have to be healthy. To, they gave us a six inch sub and that was all we had. Um, and these guys come from absolutely nothing. So was, that was huge to them. For us, we're still hungry. So they would go and get two pieces of bread, put ketchup on one side, mayonnaise on the other. And that was their sandwich, a ketchup and mayonnaise sandwich. And I saw multiple of them do it i also saw them make that a soup and eat it with a spoon and i was like okay i've been taking this for granted and also okay i can never do this again all right yeah that's pretty extreme (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, but they loved it so hey what who am i to judge what they love just like the chicago people judging hot dogs right (laughs) Right. yeah uh (laughs) excuse me uh so i had a couple questions i wanted to uh ask um all right, what's your what's your favorite? We mentioned Sandlot. I was thinking, got me thinking. What's your favorite baseball movie? Oh, I hate all the baseball movies. Yeah. I'd have to go to Major League because it's got to be a comedy. Yeah, um, Major and, League is and, classic, and Charlie Sheen does an unbelievable job in right. it. Right? Yep, wild thing. Uh, I uh, I don't know. What, I think uh, I think I, I don't know. It was like on TMC or something. One of the one of the channels I was flipping through and. Um, Major League Three came on, uh, uh, oh, and uh, I think, and uh, it just made me laugh. Like, yeah, uh, just because I don't know the last time I saw that. I it, saw two not that long ago, but three. They're, they're well, two and three are like two's okay. Three is not that that good, but it's still entertaining. Yeah, and, like, but uh, but the whole uh, Rube Baker, um, you know, like, is uh, when he couldn't throw the ball back yeah, to the pitcher, right? right? Except he, for memorizing the playmates and stuff. <laughs> and, like, uh, so. Hey, he he found out what he yeah, needed to know. Right, so, like, good for him. Yeah, but that's uh anyway, those are definitely classic movies. But what? But why do you hate those? Just because they're it, they're some, they're too corny. Yeah. like I am too far submerged in into the right. into the culture into the. So you pick you start picking out you start nitpicking picking yeah. out little things that are, are just terrible and it would never happen. Yeah. And, um, you don't be, get to become a fan right. because it's like okay going back to work, but also it's. 
It's like 2020. It's like watching 2020 on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You uh, what's a what's a dream matchup, uh, past or present, that you would you think? Oh uh, man, that you would uh, love to some pitch some dream pitch against somebody. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have a dream matchup because all the I don't want to face the good guys. <laughs> I right. want to succeed now. <laughs> um, I've faced Ryan Howard a bunch. Yeah. Uh, when he was with the Phillies, I was with the Nationals. That was really cool because he was you know St. Louis guy went to Missouri State. Um, I'm a St. Louis guy who went to Missouri State, so that was awesome. Uh, I faced Pujols a handful of times. Um, faced the Cardinals, so obviously like Molina and everything. I, I still remember Molina coming up through, uh, through through the system, and when I was younger, like that guy's gonna be really good, and he was backing up Matheny. Right. Uh, Matheny was really good. I'm like, well, what are they going to do with this guy? And, you know, Matheny got pushed on and Molina is still here. So yeah. obviously they made the right decision there. Yeah. Um, that was really cool. Molina always swings super early on me. So I don't like get to try to strike him out or, you know, have that moment. He's like, all right, he's swinging at the first pitch, make a good one. And hopefully he gets out. Yeah. Um, you know, I think a guy like Willie McGee, Willie McGee is just awesome. Sure. Uh, that would be cool. Yeah. That would be really cool. Yeah. It's been a, a tough year as a Cardinal fan with uh, losing some of uh, some of our legends. The know, absolute best, yeah. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's tough to to see, you know, the I guess it's great that these guys are so well celebrated. You know, obviously they're – Yeah, this is like – I think I've been on – seven six seven teams now and i always go back to my st louis roots they uh, they treat everybody like a star that has played for them mm-hmm. and then even the greats they're they're the absolute they're, they're gods here yeah and, and it's really cool yeah but yeah i was super sad to, to see you know that we lost uh two of them this year and stuff so uh, yeah it was a tough one man but that's uh you know like uh, that we still get to celebrate guys like willie and ozzy and you know a lot, all the other legends that came up uh here and stuff so um you know but yeah it's great to have those guys around still and i think yachty's definitely going to be one of those guys man he's like so uh, he's you know he's done so much for the city and for the team and and uh you know he's he's, he's the main guy now he's, absolutely he's, so uh, what are your thoughts on pools then when i mean what's it been 10 or not even 10 years it, it's been you know, him leaving seven, seven years yeah. that he left or so uh, I don't know. Like at first, like obviously it stinks. It's like you know because you he was a big chunk of your our youth. You know, we, absolutely. Uh, like, we're, he's the, he's the guy. He's our you know our uh, our hero here and stuff. And uh, so it definitely hurt. Um, I didn't you know I didn't understand the whole hate towards him. You know, from a lot of people. Like you know, I was like, but I was just like, it was cool at first. Like when he came back and people started giving them standing ovation yeah. and stuff like that and then i felt like it went on a little too long mm. um but i'm happy for him i mean he's still very involved here in st louis and you know doing a lot of great right. things in the community and stuff but uh so it was just uh it's just i don't know i, I always go back to like uh, i also think about like band lineups changing and stuff you know there's somebody different in the lineup sometimes and and I was like, I always go back to that uh, anchor man, you know, and he's like, "You're not Ron," you know, like, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah, yeah I always, exactly. that, that's how that's the quote that comes to mind. I'm just like, it's just hard to adjust to change sometimes, and right, but then yeah. like, then you realize maybe you know, it's like it works out, like, so I mean, we I feel we got at the time we got the best of what Albert had, and, and, and you got his best years, right. So. Uh, that's the thing. Like he went, he's going, to, and not saying he did poorly in Anaheim. He's, right. he's still doing fairly well. Yeah. Um. And please don't hit me hard <laughs> next time I see. Him. Uh, but no, it's it, it's it's pretty cool seeing everybody so involved, and everybody was so mad because they're so involved. Yeah. And then he comes back uh, years. Luckily, he went to the AL and mm-hmm. on a West Coast team, so you didn't have to see him for a while. And then he comes back, and that unbelievable ovation and right. everything. And then, uh, unfortunately, was it the second ovation? Then he hits the home run. <laughs> yeah. But it's so I, I see it as two different sides. Like sure. you only have so much. You have a small window in your life as a baseball player 
to make the amount of money. And it, I mean, his window is obviously a lot bigger than nearly everybody else has played the game. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he's done a lot more with it too, but like, do you, so do you go after the money and set yourself for three, four generations? Yeah. Um, and, or do you stay in one place because, and take less because it's where you've been. Yeah. It, it's, it's tough. Sure. And, and he's, He's from a different country. Yeah. So it's like, does he have, I don't know. There's no right answer. No, I I don't think there uh, is. And who knows the pressure he was under and stuff. I mean, like, but like you're saying, you got to think about the bigger picture sometimes. You know, like you're saying, set up his kids and everything else. And, you know, and everything. So. And, And also when you've been in a place for so long, you're expected so much. There's so much expected of you. And. Yeah. Is that kind of weighing on you a little bit? Is like, I don't know, do you need, do you just need it to get out? Yeah. And out in California, they don't really care about baseball that much. <laughs> right. So, uh, maybe it's a lot easier out there and you can just kind of ride off into the sunset. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's a, uh, it's a, it's, <sighs> it's a lot of money, whatever it was. Like, he, he definitely, um, you know, it's hard to think about like that it comes down to a dollar amount, but, you know, like, it, yeah, I think but, there's a lot more than the yeah, dollars that came right. into it. Yeah. I don't think he's hurting for dollars. Yeah, sure. Uh, but yeah, he. Uh, I think he'll still, you know, be remembered as a as a cardinal and as a great, you know, as obviously. Yeah, they, they yeah. That, so that leads us to another question: If he goes into the Hall of Fame, or when he goes into the Hall of Fame, not if, right. uh, Cardinal or Angel? I mean, got to be a Cardinal. I right? think I because like, I mean, you got to look at what he did here. Um, like uh, just. His absolute best. Yeah. Like, if they put, I didn't know he was that. I knew he was good. I didn't know he was that good until I saw the numbers of his like, yeah. you know, ten years here, where however long he was here, and I was like, oh my god, yeah, that guy was unbelievable. Like I knew he was good. Sure, I watched it day in day. Out. I didn't <laughs> yeah. know the numbers though. Like, yeah, unbelievable. There's a lot. That's how I felt. Uh, even again, going back to. Uh watching uh the last dance like after i separated myself from it for right. for that long and i and then there's talking about what jordan did and the numbers he was putting up uh from from those years and like because when you're in the moment you're like yeah you know he's great but you're like yeah but then you 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 separate yourself for uh you know whatever almost uh 15 years or whatever and you go back and you're like looking at this and you're like holy shit like this guy is like, um, like it was the absolute best yeah. that's ever touched right. a ball so i think it helps like the time and like you realize what what he was able to create at that moment and yeah. stuff. So I, I agree with that. And yeah. I, I did the same thing with Jordan. I'm like, I knew he was good. I knew yeah. he was the best. Sure. I didn't think there's anybody else that, that held a candle to him. Yeah. And then you, they, they tell you the numbers. You're like, Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Like one year, I think he was what, uh, you know, led the league in scoring and defensive player of the year and MVP. And like, yeah. And it was just like, I would I think it was 97. I guess something like that, whatever it was, but he was like, you know, tops and every single thing and it was like you know it's crazy what he was doing yeah and i think 97 might have been the time he came out with a movie too yeah or something like that <laughs> space jam yeah it was a little, little film little indie film that he did yeah one, uh, one of my favorites when i was growing up no big deal yeah right yeah man uh you uh uh so i got a couple more questions for you um yeah. and we'll get on out of here that uh do you do any celebrity impressions? I, d- I don't do any impressions nope, at all. No celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> it. No, I wish I could. I, yeah. I, no. I, I, so I, I love comedy and I love impressions. I just can't do them. Yeah. I figured like, uh, you know, not that like, I mean, I was for any. It- I played with Derek Holland though. So yeah. I, I know he does like one of the best. Harry carries. Okay. I wish. Yeah. I wish. I'm not even going to try. Right. It's not, it's not worth, <laughs> yeah. I should just look him up on my phone and say, this is me. There you go. <laughs> I do like, that's the thing. I think it gets to the point where you end up just doing everybody else's impression of somebody, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Like, you know, whatever yeah. you, people start doing, like, you know, if it's Harry Carey, you do the, like the Will Ferrell version of Harry, you know. Absolutely. Like a, and like, Will Ferrell, uh, oh, you know, Will so, Ferrell is so good at, at uh, a lot of impressions. Yep. Yeah. But, uh, so, so it's always funny to me. Um, you uh oh speaking of which uh Frank Caliendo that's one of my favorite stand-ups yeah. that he did because he did so many of impressions and he was spot on with all of them mm-hmm. and um 
the way he did John Madden. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then President Bush. It was amazing. And I so I have the DVD and I watch it every week. Here's a guy. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And talking about Brett Favre. All right. (laughs) Unbelievable. So that's one of my favorite comedy sketches of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Caliendo is so good at that stuff and and so fast. Yes. Yeah, and he can he goes back and forth right. so much. And De Niro, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dana Carvey's like one of my like uh, watching him work like that too. Like he's so yeah. He's really so good he t- he was an SNL guy yeah. of the you know mid nineties, right. mid mid nineties, late eighties, mid nineties. SNL best comedy out there. Yeah, there was. Uh, I mean, so much good out of that. Uh, definitely, um, you know, still. Obviously, all those guys are legends now and stuff. I was just, but yeah, I still watch uh, a lot of those old clips. I pull up all kinds of them on yeah. YouTube and everything else. And, um, but yeah, great, great stuff out of SNL in those years. I still love the new stuff. Like not, not as much. It, like, it got but, too political yeah. for me. I because we see political ads. Sure. We uh, the news is talking politics. Yeah. Yeah. There's no escape. Sports needs to stay away from politics. Comedy needs to stay away from politics. Yeah. That's our escape from politics. Yeah. Please just do that. It's uh, there's still some. There's always something good in there, though. Like they're always still worth watching, um, even though. But uh, definitely, people are attached to different generations of the show for sure. Yeah. And like uh, my dad hated all the stuff that I grew up watching. You know, you know, it's crazy. It's so, like, are we becoming yeah. our parents? Right. Because yeah. so. <laughs> I I hate the music that comes yeah. out right. Now. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like the SNL right now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, here's something to think about. I, was, I think I, I have a fun asking this question to a lot of people lately. But uh, so the day comes uh, when there's a Ross Detweiler biopic comes out. Uh, who would you cast to like to see cast as Denzel Washington? Denzel. Denzel. <laughs> I mean, he, he could do it, man. He, he could do anything. Yeah, he's the man. He can do it. Um, I have to go. Kenny Powers. Yeah. Uh, I have to go. David Mc, or uh, Danny, Danny McBride. Yeah. yeah. Danny McBride. Kenny Powers, <laughs> is that is that baseball you can handle? Like, it, it, yeah, oh, yeah, it's yeah, it's the absolute best, All right? Because uh, it's way closer to the truth than, <laughs> yeah. any, than any, of, <laughs> any of the movies. Uh, <laughs> that yeah, uh, that sounds terrible to say, but it's it's the truth. Oh yeah, that's so silly. Uh, uh, and then yeah, he's just a rock star, Kenny Powers. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been watching a lot of Denzel movies lately. Den- Man. I, I don't know a bad one. They're, they're, can, can you name a bad Denzel movie? No, they don't exist. Like he's, I don't know how he does it. Like to have a, a kind of streak like that. Like right. I mean, he just, but yeah, he's so good and all that stuff. I recently watched like Man on Fire. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, yeah, that's probably one of the, one of my yeah. favorite. And uh, but yeah, just uh, he's he's good at like serious stuff and he's good at action. So, I mean, those Equalizer movies are badass. Yep. So like. You know, I just, uh, he's just good at all of it. He's really good at the good guy and he's really good yeah, at the bad yeah. guy. He can do it all, man. Maybe training not. day, like, <laughs> yeah, training day was awesome. Yeah. So, so good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I get, I'm pretty big movie buff. As much as I love music and stuff, I, I love talking movies and getting, getting into all those. And, um, uh, let's see. What's, uh, what's, uh, Strangest fear. Have, strangest fear? You, you have a f- strange fear? Strange fear. Oof. I don't know. I don't even know if I'd want my strange fear out yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, I wouldn't say I have a strange yeah. fear. Um, snakes? Yeah. I, I I don't trust snakes. <laughs> right. I guess I shouldn't tell you to turn around there. <laughs> I have a ball python. And, Do you uh, really? Yeah. Is it? But, Oh, well, as long as it's in a cage, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's not just roaming as as around. Cage, yeah. Yeah. I don't mind them. Like, <laughs> I, I, I can go to an, uh, a zoo. I can see sure. them there. That's fine. Yeah, I, uh, I'm the same thing. Like, I like, I don't, uh, I don't have really a problem with spiders or anything. Like, if I just like, if it's in my hand or something. But if it falls on me, oh, uh, yeah. it's somewhere I don't know where it's at or something like it's that. It's the unknown. Yeah. It, yes. Now that I don't like that at all. Like, if it's just yeah. in, in my hair or or whatever, something like. We nope. Yeah. Get out yeah, of we here. We found a, a, <laughs> a big ass spider in the basement last week, and it's like, nope. All yeah. right, basement's closed for a week now. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the fear of the unknown. You know, if there's yeah. one, there's going to be more than one. Right. And in the he was in the back corner, not even close to a window or a door or anything. Yeah. It's like he. How long has he been hanging out? All right, honey, we have to move. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or insurance. It yeah. burned down. 
uh what's uh what's uh we, we mentioned the girls uh a little bit uh but what what is that like for you like being dad now like is that uh, <laughs> I mean, is it uh um so when i'm growing up i'm just you know you picture yourself as as a boy dad teaching them sports yeah, right. you know and the right way to live and everything and so i have these two girls now and i'm just like oh what do i do <laughs> I don't know what to tell them, but it, it's it's awesome. Yeah, man. It, it's so cool. Um, I get to listen to JoJo Siwa music <laughs> and uh, <laughs> figure out how to do ponytails. Right? And, no, it, it's actually it's it's really cool. Yeah. Um, My buddy Josh uh, Arnold's got a great joke about uh, uh, you know just not he's not really like a macho kind of guy. He's just, right. Uh, so he's always uh, feared like having. Uh, having to be a dad and having to like teach his kid like yeah when we when we were growing up they'd get like oh I'm never having a daughter right I'll never have a daughter yeah, yeah. so he's like uh, so you know he jokes about like uh, you know getting a, his kid signs up for baseball or whatever and he's like oh so hey man which one's yours he's like uh, the one out there making a bracelet out of weeds you know and, like <laughs> or something like that and, like yeah. you know just not not being able to teach him baseball and all those guy things or whatever. It right, is, uh, yeah. Anyway, just funny to me. Like, like I'm – I mean, it sounds so terrible, but uh, I'm learning as I'm going. I'm learning more from her than sure. she's learning from me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, not saying she can't be an athlete or anything, right. but, you know. Yeah. I, I'm just going to go along with – go along with whatever she likes. I'm not going to push her towards mm-hmm. one way or the other, so – just so it's out there, both my daughters are now left-handed and throwing stuff. But, <laughs> but that wasn't on me. Right. I mean, they just picked it up and they did it themselves. Yeah. But uh, how, yeah, how so crazy we'll would that be, though? Like if they att- attach to it and like and it, it's and, it's weird. And they're both like seemingly one of them's under the age of one, one of them's right. four years old, and they're throwing stuff with their left hand, and they're they seem to be better than their peers at it. Right. So. Like, is that a thing or is it just something that they've watched me? Now I know they're watching me. My wife tells me they watch the games all year long. Yeah. Who knows? They were probably watching Bachelor or something like that. <laughs> uh, but, like, obviously they, they, they've been watching and they pick things up with their left hand and they start throwing things, yeah. which is sounds awesome. Not that great inside the house. Uh, right. <laughs> you, you, got, you got these bouncy balls going everywhere. You know, we have a dog that's ducking under them. We have, <laughs> one of them's under, under one years old, so yeah. she's got to watch out. Can't have her take a direct hit. No. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, it, it's fun. Um, I've never really picked up the game of golf. I know golf is a very gender-neutral sport. Maybe we can learn at the same time, yeah. and they can get their college paid for it at the same hey, time. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Uh, I just think like, you know, it, when, whenever the time comes, uh, where you step away from the game as a player and, uh, you know, to be able to like go into coaching and, uh, Oh, I will know. never coach. Uh, I, 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 I mean, can't even handle my own kids. I don't want to handle yeah, my own like, But no, so I just think that'd be a lot of fun to like. It, to, yeah, I think it would be. And the older I get, the more I slow down. The more I actually look at things from a mature perspective, mm-hmm. coaching actually would be really cool. I did uh, I did a little bit of it, like which I don't I didn't even have any kids on the team, so it wasn't like it was. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if I would want to do my own kids. I I, I, I think coaching other kids right. to where you like I don't know I I I keep things with me too much. Yeah. To where like my older one's name's Tori. Like, if Tori does something at practice, I'm not going to let it go once we leave practice. Yeah. It's coming home with me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's coming home with her, too. So I don't think that's very healthy. Yeah. But... I, I, uh, I worked for the YMCA for, like, eight years, uh, rough in sports. And I, oh, cool. And I used to do, uh, uh, like, uh, the rookies classes for kindergarten, uh, for four- and five-year-olds. Yeah. Uh, teaching them baseball and basketball and, and stuff. And uh, doing those t-ball classes, man, I was... Very challenging. I mean, it was a, it was a lot of fun, rewarding. In the time. I mean, when they, you know, when they all want to give you hugs and high fives and tell you that right. you're the best or whatever, that stuff is like. So, how many of them actually like picked it up? How many of them got it? I mean, like, I don't know. At that point, one three, one of I, I don't know. It is it's more or less. It's uh, 
you know, it's a full time job just trying to get them to run the right way on the you just know. to point the yeah, right way. Right. Yeah. yeah, so like I know I know how it is with one. Yeah. I can't imagine with thirteen or however yeah. many you had out there. So it was uh, it was challenging, and then of course, like you're trying to get parents involved, but they're like, "Hey, I just worked uh, oh, full, yeah, you know, full time. I don't want to, you know, this is your problem now." So like, yeah, so. this is I'm paying <laughs> I'm paying for this, so your yeah, babysitting. Right. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, it was uh, it was a ton of fun, and I had a really good time doing that stuff for the, those years. And um, but uh, yeah, it was uh, I for me like you know I'm not I, I never really got into baseball, so it was hard for you know hard for me to really like fully explain it. Like I was more or less just trying to tell them to you know keep your eye on the ball, that kind of that kind yeah, of yeah. stuff. You know, you, to hit, YouTube just, it real quick right yeah. before you're, you're coaching. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. like. Just trying to hit, tell them to hit the ball and not the bottom of the tee. Yeah. Not, you know, oh, I still else, hit so. the bottom of the tee. Yeah. So good thing I throw the ball. I, yeah. there, I was terrible at hitting. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Uh, it was cool though, man. Those were some really good times there. And um, like I said, just the uh, the whole you know kind of feel. I don't. You know, who knows whatever happened to any of those kids? But like, if they went on to pursue it or anything. But like, just to think about the the possible ripple effect. You know, that you could be involved in. Yeah, absolutely, inspire these. You know, or you know, want them to create a passion that where like, this is something I really want to do or something like that. And, yeah, that is, it is cool. And, and I've worked camps and I've right. really enjoyed it. And it, it's not bad at all. I just, I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to do that for <laughs> Yeah, time. sure. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I miss so much time at home now. Right. That there's probably going to be, after I'm done, a few years where I do nothing. I just stay at home. Mm-hmm. And then right after that, my daughters and wife are probably like, you're going to have to do something. You need to get out of the house. Yeah. So, <laughs> All right. Then I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Man, that's when uh, you go purchase a set of clubs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Hit the I've, yeah. I've never been a golfer, but I will learn just to get out of the house. Right. Uh, what's uh, – uh, so what do you what are you thinking uh, as far as uh, next for, for Ross Detweiler? What do you – Whew, that's a, that's kind of a big question. All right, uh, I, mean, I don't know what you can talk about yet or whatever. But like, no, I I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, we we actually since the World Series isn't over, we are not allowed to talk to other teams. Sure. Um, so I expect to play another year, mm-hmm. at least another year. Uh, to get full pension, I need another two years. Am, am I willing to hang on that long? I don't know. Uh, yeah. My daughter's going to be – my older daughter is going to be in kindergarten next year. So, you know, it it was really cool getting home. That They stayed with me the whole season once I got home. It was really – I love driving her to school every day. Yeah. Picking her up from school every day. Um, now, that, that kind of weighs in on my decision down the road. Next year, I will fully play, you mm-hmm. know – um, as long as we don't have a 2020 season, as long as we have a, a, a real season with fans, um, I don't think I can do that again. That yeah. was, I mean, that, that was kind of ridiculous. Sure. Uh, real tough. I was in Chicago, so like, re- really tough city to be in in 2020. It was, uh, I mean, it was hit hard with with, with all the COVID stuff, yeah. and they had huge lockdowns, and you know. Um, I was also there in 2019 when it was one of the best cities to be in. So that, yeah. that was, I knew what I was missing. I think that was the problem is I knew what I was missing. I knew how much fun we had the year before. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, I'm not hoping for one team. I'm yeah. not, I don't know. I, you know, willing to go anywhere. I've been in however many cities I've been yeah. <laughs> now between minor leagues and major leagues and, uh, we're very well traveled, yeah. and we can go anywhere. My wife has learned how to pick up after me, pack up the whole house, and be somewhere in a day. So yeah. we can we can be anywhere. It 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 really doesn't matter. Um, now, St. Louis would be the last place I'd want to play. Really? Um, no, I'm saying like my last year of playing. Oh, that's the only time i'd want to okay because there's so much extra that goes into it yeah um so say a 2020 season happens maybe that's the year i want to be in st louis where people aren't asking for tickets i'm not running into people every day there's <laughs> yeah. like like there, there's just so much extra that goes into it and there's so much extra pressure that gets put on you know wife 
kids at school, yeah. my parents, everybody. Sure. Um, cause I know that's what happens every time we come in for a three game, four game series. Um, but we were supposed to do this past year, we were supposed to do the, uh, the field of dreams game mm-hmm. with the Cardinals. Uh, and it, it got canceled because of COVID. Right. And I was really looking forward to that. Really was. Uh, that would have been really cool. Yeah. But didn't get a chance. So, and they didn't announce, ne- I don't know if they've announced next year, if it's going to be the Cardinals again, or if it's going to be the Yankees like it originally was supposed to be. All we know is it's going to be the White Sox. It'd be kind of fun to be on the other team now. Yeah. I Man, I think that'd be so cool. Uh, you know, obviously it's... It's probably every boy's you know dream that puts on the uniform. They want to p- play for the hometown team and yeah. and stuff. But uh, that'd be really uh, really wild to see. Uh, you know. Your so bo- your- am I saying if it was the Cardinals next year, I'd be done? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. Yeah. No, but I, I think it'd be really cool to play with the Cardinals. Yeah. Especially going to spring training with the Cardinals, like we were talking earlier. They bring in all their guys. Mm-hmm. They bring in, um, you know, like, like a Yachty. As soon as he's done, he's going to be in spring training every year. Yeah. Like teaching the catchers what they need to do. You know, Lou Brock was there every year. Right. Um, you, you have all these guys that go down every year because they're Cardinal legends. Yeah. And. Growing up in St. Louis, you just know every one of the Cardinal legends, and it'd be really cool to work aside beside them. Yeah, man, I'd be uh, it'd be it'd be really cool, man. I hopefully uh, I'll see. I'll make some calls. You know, see what, see <laughs> I, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, why I came here. I was hoping yeah, to actually man. get a hey, job. You know, uh, it's, I got a lot of pull in this town. Yeah. We'll see what I can do, man. Well, yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, we haven't even <laughs> talked about Chuck Berry yet. Talking about yeah. speaking of this yeah, town. Right. Yeah. I um that's uh I I take I I think it's weird because like a lot of people will like I mean obviously you know Chuck's Godfather of rock and roll but it's like it's just so weird to think about because like I had a totally different uh you know growing up being next door neighbors with him like you yeah. know, it was like not that I ever like got to know him or anything but just like it was just weird like oh yep Chuck Berry lives right there you know it's like unbelievable so, like and then when when was it he had a whole amusement park out there. Yeah, that was actually just buried, and he had like a Vegas style pool that was in the shape of a guitar yeah. on his land, and they had to bury that. Huh. Like he got in a ton of trouble, and yeah. they, they had to just shut everything down, bury it. And I, I did some research. Yeah, you know, I have some time on my hands <laughs> uh, when we're traveling. So one one day, I'm just like, you know, what, Chuck Berry, let's do it. Right, let's, let's figure this whole thing out. And it was on all this land out in Winsville. Yeah, right here that. The land that I've driven by, you know, a thousand times. Sure. Uh, and, you know, I, I just never really knew everything that happened there. Yeah, I don't I don't either. But I grew uh, – or not grew up, but I uh, worked with this uh, guy who grew up here. Uh, and very well could be completely full of shit because a lot of his stories were. But <laughs> it definitely seemed very possible also. But he was telling me a story about uh, some of the stuff that like partying at Chuck's house and like how like a lot of neighborhood kids would come out there. And then, like, when there was also, like, celebrities there and stuff. So, like, right. and he says, uh, like, I think it was whatever. It was, like, you know, celebrities in the back, whatever, and the kids in the front. Kind of, however, it worked out. And then, but he's telling me a story about, like, sneaking back uh, around the house or something like that. And he's seen, like, Keith Richards uh, back there. Uh, passed out in the yard or whatever, something really? you know, that kind of, whatever. You know those guys party like that. I mean, they just don't want other people uh, to see it. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like it definitely seems very possible. Keith yeah. Richards likes to party, and uh, but I was just like, that's even crazier to me to think about. Like there was a time when Winsville, there was yeah, George Thorogood yeah. had such a good time yeah. that he wrote songs oh, about yeah. Winsville. Cruising Highway Z, my Coupe de Ville. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, man. That's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I uh, so I don't know, just because when we grew up here, like I felt that Winsfield was just like there was nothing happened here, you know? No, nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. Like, Where there's just trees <laughs> and farm around us. There's nothing. And then like to think about, you know, twenty years before or whatever, you know, there was all this going on, and it was it was that. a happening spot. Yeah, and there was an amusement park down the street <laughs> yeah. from us here out in the freaking country. <laughs> yeah. So it was. Uh, I think that I think probably everybody goes through a little bit of that though, like growing up, like where you just like think that you're whatever you're from is like the worst, you know. It's like yeah, you're trying to get out. Except for uh, yeah, I, people in California and Florida, where where do they escape to? Yeah. Everybody goes on vacation there, All right? <laughs> to go to the beach and everything, yeah. and where do they go? Yeah, who knows? 
I guess to Europe or something. Or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, no. I don't know. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Ross, this has been uh, incredible, man. I'm, I can't uh, thank you enough for doing this. Like, it's just really cool to sit down and chat and uh, catch up with a buddy, especially like I said after it's been uh, so long and stuff that we really get to reconnect and things. And hopefully, it's not. Uh, that much longer so we can do it again sometime go yeah let's do it again catch up and i'll uh, be better my second time i promise <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh this is uh it's been awesome i really am glad it worked out and um you uh hopefully we'll uh we'll see you uh in the spring on somewhere pitching uh yeah let's hope i have and, some really good stories from next year and maybe a world series yeah, like yeah, i man. can yeah i would i would love to see you check that box man that would that'd be uh that'd be so cool yeah so. that's uh definitely the one box i have left yep yeah. i i uh i was uh just listening you know obviously it's on now it was the games were going on and and like it was some of the post interviews were like you know this is this is the dream and, and he was talking one of the guys was like you know that his parents got to be there to see it and stuff yeah. and, like, and i was just like uh and i saw i guess there's like a local guy his parents live here i don't know i, I forget who the player in know. the World Series right now? Yeah. Stanek. Stan, is that it? Yeah. So he interviewed his parents on KSDK or whatever, and like, and dad's like 80 or something like that. And he's like, you know, so he's like, it's a once in a lifetime type of thing, you know, oh, like, that's and cool. like get, get to go to the, he's going to go. Oh, no. Stanek got traded from the Rays. I was thinking, of, yeah, there was a guy that, uh, Shoot, he he went to school somewhere around here. I know yeah. what you're talking about. I saw it, I saw the same thing. Yeah. Frank Cusimano did yeah. something on, on the news. But that just, I mean, like, let alone like it's super cool for you, but like I would be, you know, the fact that you're able to take your parents to go see you pitching yeah. in the World Series or something like, you know, whatever it is like that. Like, yeah, one, uh, one of the biggest feats I've had is we played here on Father's Day and I actually pitched on Father's Day in yeah. front of my dad in St. Louis, and that was really cool. Yeah, yeah, man, that'd be uh, that'd be a really pretty emotional thing, I'm sure. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was definitely really cool seeing him in the tunnel after the game, mm -hmm. uh, getting the guy, you know, and. I, I guess that's – I get it now. Now that I have kids, I get it. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I, get, yeah. I get why that stuff is all sappy. I never thought it was before. Yeah. But now I get it. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, that would be wild, man. So, uh, well, all right, brother. Well, thank you so much for doing this, and uh, I'll see you soon, my friend. Absolutely. I had a great time. Thank you. Right. Bye, Ross. Bye, everyone. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Well, yeah, that was it.